Hey guys, we're Chris and Beck, and we're renovating our four-wheel drive Toyota Coaster 93 bus behind us. Here's what our bus looked like before and after. In this bus build series, we're gonna take you through the full process from buying a bus right through to making our dream build become a reality. Be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with this multi-part series. Let's get started. Here's a closer look at our bus before we did our bus build. As you can see, it's been fit out for a family of four. Chris and I's goals for this rebuild was to get this done efficiently and cost effectively. Here's a look at after we completed the build. Today's the day. Been waiting for this for a long time. It's been a absolute mission to get here. But now we're finally going to start with the partial demolition and do some small changes to the bus. Pretty excited. So quick recap on what happened for us to get here. It was an absolute mission. We were in Tasmania uh, when we saw this bus online and it was based in Noosa Heads, right? So we've been looking for the four wheel drive coaster for a long, long time and this came up and we had to make a quick decision to fly up and try and purchase this thing. Basically, the next day I jumped on a plane in Launceston, flew all the way up to Maruchi Door and then drove to uh, Noosa Heads in a rental car to go see this bus um, and then I was able to buy it. Now there's a few things that I needed to get done by the mechanics and get checked over before I purchased it so it took me about a week up there sorting everything out. In the meantime back at the raw end of the deal she had to actually drive Berta, our four-wheel drive, uh, jump on the ferry from uh, Devonport in, in Tasmania over to Melbourne. That's about, I don't know, eight, 10 hours, the full day. And then she'd drive from Melbourne here to Adelaide. We're actually in a place called Goolwa, where uh, my father's house is at the moment. So she was then, she drove that, took about two, three days. She came all the way over here. After that, she just chilled here in Goolwa until I arrived, which is about uh, four or five days. Because after I purchased it, I drove the bus 2,100 kilometers from Noosa Heads to Adelaide or here in Goolwa. It was a mammoth task in this thing. Especially as um, she needs a few, let's say, shock repairs and underbody repairs to be ready for really for a big drive. Um, so that was a bit of a wild ride all the way down. It took me about two, three days to recover. Which brings us to here and now the start of the demolition. So to start off with what we need to do is we have a bit of rust in the gutters of the roof. That needs to be fixed straight away. Otherwise it's gonna get way worse and it's gonna cost us a lot of money. So we found some Someone who was able to fix it but to do that we need to remove the roof and also if you look at the back we obviously don't have kids we need to remove those top bunk beds and then I'm going to lift the queen bed up um, queen or double bed I think whatever it is lift it up so we got a bit of space in the back so we can access on the back for things like surfboards basically all our adventure stuff now we're just doing these things as temporary adjustments because we're actually going to go back to Perth in three to six months and rip the whole thing out and start again so it's gonna be a bit of fun we'll set up a bit of a time lapse and here we go yeah, hello What's going on? Yeah. All right, this is kind of why we. Oh. This is why we persevered with this thing. I'm gonna show you basically what our main problem is on the roof, right? And so I think this has the problem with most coasters and also on land cruisers as well. But you can see, and there's, there's the seam here. And the seam basically, what happens is uh, there's like a guttering system at the top there. And if the car stays still for a long time in the rain, water pools in that guttering system and obviously rusts it, especially if you're close to the ocean. Um, this thing was built to go onto the sand and obviously it's had its life in far north Queensland, I assume touring on the sand. And so while they've looked after the bottom 
of like the chassis and everything really, really well. It's the roof that is currently the problem. Now there's a bit of rust here and it's gonna cost us a bit of money to fix. We're not welders or are we panel beaters? We don't really have an experience fixing it. Now, if this was just a normal Toyota coaster and it didn't have the full drive conversion, then we probably wouldn't have purchased this at all because of the rust on it. The only reason we purchased it was because of the full drive conversion and they're very like super, super rare to find. So ripping up the roof, to be honest with you, it's a little bit disheartening seeing all the rust because it's a little bit more I thought it was gonna be. So that basically means more money or more time, which we don't really have because we only have about three weeks at this particular spot. So look, in three days time, we take it to the panel beaters. And since I've ripped the roof off, I can show him exactly now where the problem areas are. He's given us a quote for three, maybe four grand just to do these roof seals, but there's more rust now that we've found. So I expect that to expand. So if you ever basically are buying something with a little bit of rust on it, it's really like a huge way up, right? Is you gotta see whether it is actually worth it, whether the vehicle is worth it because rust is so expensive to fix. Anyway, that's where we're at at the moment. We gotta rip off all this insulation. So try and clean it up and make it as easy as possible for these guys to access the rust. Therefore, they don't charge us when, um, uh, you know, like 100 bucks an hour to remove insulation. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay, cool. So we've just removed the front area and if you wanna have a look, what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Now we've removed the front area because we wanna check if there's any rust around the windscreen. Yeah, she's an older body. Um, and there is a little bit. You can have a little look here. Just a bit here. So now we've removed the aircon ducting i'll show you what they look like right so first off that's the top these things here are the ducting that then pushes back now if you have a brand new toyota coaster then you probably already have ducting that goes like all the way through but when we got our coaster that had already been cut off Unless you want the air con to come all the way to the back when you're driving, then in my opinion, you can just rip these ductings out. And these holes here, uh, you know, close that up. So then we have an extra like space for cabinetry, which is literally like from here all the way down here. Because this, you know, the main Toyota Coaster air con only actually works when, you're, when your engine's running. So there's no real point in the middle of the night. You don't want to, uh, been turning your engine on. So essentially you have two, one for when you're driving. Right there, and right there, and then there, and there. And just probably gonna blast air because this thing's meant to, you know, cool the whole, whole van, which will be good when we're driving. And then when we're staying still and it's super hot, we had to use fans, which we probably will use fans majority of the time. And then if it's insanely hot, then we'll use our air con um, that'll run off our battery pack. When I took it out, we found that there were actually like, you know, there's cocoons for like hornets. So there used to be hornets in there. There's Beck. She is hot. <laughs> <laughs> so as we took out everything, we noticed that there's a whole heap of gunk 
What we're gonna do is just clean up all these panels, including the main aircon vent that takes you know air from the outside. Soap and water, and wash her up. Other than that, Beck. <laughs> Over here. She's been continuing to scrape all the fluff off. So the original insulation and what they do is they bloody glue it to the top there. So we've had to scrape it all off because we don't want any like glue stuff because now we're gonna put foil board over the top. And so we just wanna make it kind of clean. It's not an easy job though. So if you wanna do it, this is what you need. <laughs> this will do it for you. And a lot of elbow grease. Hours. <laughs> We're, I reckon we're more than halfway now, but it's taken two half days, so a day. Yeah, to yeah. To do half of it. It's definitely a full day. Definitely a full day of scrapping off. It is a terrible job. It's also 27 yeah. degrees, so it's roasting in here. Yeah, it's pretty hot down here in South <laughs> Australia. But the main thing is, is that we got all of, all of that stuff cleaned up, so, um our rust guy can come and easily do it. If you have rust or, or you need something repaired on the roof, it's pretty easy to take out all the roof, but it, it just means that like every hour you spend is not you spending $100 for, for a panel beater or someone to fix it. So hopefully this kind of helps you with your build so you understand what everything is. One really important thing when you have the roof off, see this here? If you have a problem with water coming through this seam here, which is very common with coasters, then water may pull underneath here. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab your hand and you wanna run it all through there to check if there's any rust. It's not really something you can do when you first purchase the car, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just the way it is. But just note, if you have rust in that seam area, up the top, then it's likely water has come through that rust and then pulled down here I don't know if you can see down there. And um, yeah, it would have rusted down there, so you need to get that fixed. Well, I think we're all sorted for the rust, aren't we now, babe? That's good news, because we're taking it in tomorrow, so. Yeah. That's really good news. Basically, we need to get the bed made up a lot higher, get the flooring done, kitchen, put this oven into the kitchen put this into here, put a cupboard here, um, put, it, put the ceiling back in, fix all the electricals, choose our lighting, um, fix the curtains, get them all made brand new, and then decide if we want like panelling to cover up all of this down here as well. It's gonna be, it's a journey. <laughs> and this is first stage renovation, like, um. This is the thing, we don't want to do too much because we just want to renovate it just enough for us to live in it for the next three months. 